evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We are episode five of the About Jesus series. You'll see the web link for the free PDF. Um, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? I'm going to pray for us and do a an abbreviated <laughs> review tonight. We'll look, we always have several passages. Let me give you one ahead of time that I'll be talking about in the first section. Matthew 5.17, if you want to get there. Matthew 5.17. Welcome, guys, again. Thanks for doing this. Welcome to you all out there. And um, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for hope in the midst of a dark and troubled world, a world of sin, a world of death, a world of struggles and sufferings. Father, we thank you that there is life and hope in Jesus Christ. We pray for peace. We pray for divine intervention. We pray for revival in the land and reconciliation in the land. Father, help us in our teaching and discussing that you would be glorified, that Christ would be exalted, that your spirit would be at work in this time of fellowship and teaching. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let me go ahead to the booklet just to show the page that we're on. <clears throat> Scene 4, Eternal Life. And um, last week we began on this page talking about what does Jesus provide, and that's eternal life. And I'll read that verse there at the top. This is the foundational verse for the series. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. So going way back, episode 1, we talked about who is God. That's the top triangle, the top white triangle. God is creator, and God is holy. God is just. God is merciful. Then episode 2, who is man? That's the bottom triangle. Man made in the image of God and yet fallen into sin. And then episode 3, who is Jesus? That's that lavender down triangle who is both God and man. And he reveals God to man and he reconciles man back to God. And then episode 4, uh, what does Jesus provide? Eternal life and many different aspects of that. The way we summarized it last week was a relationship with God that never ends. And now this week, episode 5, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? And so now you see that uh, black cross representing his sacrificial death. And then you see that golden arrow representing his resurrection and his ascension into heaven is symbolized by that golden crown. Now let me give you the fill in the blanks there and um, read those verses at the bottom and we'll begin. Jesus died in the place of sinners and he rose to live again and returned to heaven as king. Jesus died in the place of sinners and he rose to live again and returned to heaven as king. And that's where Jesus is now, living and reigning as king, ruling over the kingdom of God, and he's serving as priest, reconciling sinners to God. And so anyway, his death and his resurrection is what those blanks are getting to because that is... Uh, those are the central works that he did, but those are not the only works that he did. Now, those bottom verses, uh, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree from 1 Peter 2, 24. Powerful verse there because it's our sins, but uh, he bears them up in his body on the cross. And then the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans six twenty three. We talked about that last week. The gift of eternal life. Okay, so uh, let me map, let me give you, uh, I think this is totally corny, but I also think it can be helpful, a five finger summary of the work of Christ. Right? What did he do? That's the work of Christ. He came, he lived, he died, he rose, and he gives he gives with an S because he's currently doing. I'll give you the, I'll give you those again. That's what we're working through to, to, tonight. That's like a map of the work of Christ. First of all, he came. He came from heaven to earth as a man. We talked about that episode three, right? He lived. He lived a righteous life that we never could live. Okay. He came. He lived. He died. He died a sacrificial death. We'll be talking about that tonight. Okay. He came. 
He lived. He died. He rose. He rose to newness of life. He rose to eternal life. He came. He lived. He died. He rose. And he now gives <coughs> eternal life to sinners from heaven. Right As the gospel is preached on earth, the spirit of the risen Christ who lives in heaven births new life, eternal life in the hearts of sinners. So first of all, uh, I'm talking about his life, Christ's righteous life. And the verse I gave you was Matthew 5.17. And I'm going to read uh, Matthew 5.17 and 18, the righteous life of Christ. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. All is accomplished. Now there's many aspects to Christ fulfilling the law, but the, the central aspect and the aspect I want to highlight right now is that he obeyed God's law perfectly in mind, in heart, in word, in deed. He obeyed every command perfectly in every way, and he did not um, do those things that, you, that we are prohibited to do. So we talked about this, honestly, I forget if we, we emphasized it in episode two when we talked about sin. And so if you just if you go back to what we talked about last week, one of the blessings of eternal life that we talked about was the blessing of justification, where our sins are taken from us, and then righteousness is given to us so that we're counted righteous in God's eyes. Well, where does that righteousness come from? It doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It doesn't, it doesn't just poof into existence, but it is the righteousness that Christ lived out that's credited to our account. Mm -hmm. And so that, in the gospel, that which was true about him becomes true about us. Yeah. His righteousness is counted to us. He did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. And that, he didn't come and say, you know, obeying God doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. God doesn't care about it. No, that's not the gospel. That is not God's grace. But to, not to abolish, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And again, many layers to that. He fulfills the law and he fulfills the prophets. But the aspect that I want to highlight is he obeyed the law perfectly. He obeyed the law perfectly. And if we're ever going, if anybody, not just us three, not just you who are watching, but if anyone is ever going to stand before the holy creator God and be accepted, it will only be on the basis of Christ's righteousness given to us or given to them by grace through faith so his righteous life his righteous life and we also want to talk about his sacrificial death mm -hmm. his sacrificial death yeah yeah and uh, one of the other things you said he 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 didn't do any of the things we're prohibited from doing but another part of that is that he did all the things we should be doing we, yeah, amen. You know, there's these sins of omission where we don't do the good and the right that god lays before us but mm -hmm. he did that as well and so uh, yeah, his his righteous life, the, the fact that he lived without error, uh, that's that's a big part of his sacrificial death. Yeah. But you know, I want to back up a little bit first and talk about the fact uh, of the law and what the law is about. So obviously, when Adam and Eve, we're going to go all the way back to the to the, to the beginning when we talk about God as Creator. When Adam and Eve, uh, who were made in God's image, fell, sin entered the world, and death entered the world. That's the penalty again uh, for sin. The penalty of sin is death. That's that's the, the wages of sin, as Paul puts it. So, uh, but God is also merciful and loving. All the things, we, you know, the, the beginning of John three sixteen, right? For God so loved the world. Uh, so he's had this plan uh, since before the foundations of the world, before anything happened to redeem and restore us and a people to himself. But there's a requirement to fulfill and to pay that debt of 
sin, of the, of death, of the wages of death. And so, uh, again, the first, you know, we talked about this a little bit in previous episodes, the, the first way that he did that through the law was establishing this sacrificial system where, you know, one day a year the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and there would be a sacrifice made for the atonement of the people. Mm. Uh, we talk about that the, uh, as, as Yom Kippur. You might hear that, the Day of Atonement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they would do this. And so uh, this innocent... Uh, animal who had done nothing, who didn't have a, a, a soul or an ability to obey God or not, stood in as a substitute for us, for humanity. And uh, that would that would sort of appease God's wrath and, and, and fulfill the just requirement of sin, which is death. Uh, but it didn't last. It's something that obviously had to happen again and again. It was a cycle, you know, the people would be atoned for and then there would be more sin. And then the next year they would have to do the whole thing again. So this ritual was carried out over and over again, and uh, the, the writer of Hebrews uh, refers to this that he says that uh, it was a shadow of the good things to come. Well, the good things to come was was Jesus and, and him coming and living that righteous, mm-hmm. sinless, holy life that fulfilled the law. Um, it comes down to two words, which... Uh, they're even in some of the verses, the, the verse from First Peter that you read, uh, they're there. And those two words are, but God. And mm-hmm. they're the two greatest words in all of Scripture. Uh, sometimes they appear right beside each other. Sometimes it's, but this, 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 God did this. You know, they might be split up a little bit. And that's what happens here in Galatians 4. Uh, Paul writes that, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under law so that we might re- receive adoption as sons. So it's very important. We talked about the incarnation already. It's very important that God became man. Uh, he put on flesh and dwelt among us uh, because he came to be that perfect sacrifice. So he took on flesh. He lived as a human being so that he could commiserate with us. If God just had done something and didn't know what it was like to be a human being, uh, someone might be able to like, Say, well, you're not being fair. Mm. Uh, God emptied himself of, of, of the position in heaven, put on flesh, became man, fully God, fully man, but fully man that he would experience everything we do. And there again, yet was without sin. So he knows what it's like to be us. Uh, he upheld his law <clears throat> perfectly. He was without spot or blemish. That was the requirement of the sacrifice. It had to be the best of the flock without any defect at all. Uh, completely innocent, completely uh, uh, not lacking in anything. And because he was man, Jesus then could stand in our place. He could be that substitutionary, mm-hmm. uh, atone, yeah. make that substitutionary atonement for us. He could stand in our place as a substitute. He could be the representative of all humanity before the Father and satisfy this just wrath of God. So uh, animals could never do that. Here, here in uh, yeah. Hebrews uh, chapter 10, Uh, Verse 4, it it tells us that uh, uh, for it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So this is why that system just happened over and over again. It was never completely able to satisfy. So uh, the best that those sacrifices could ever do was just to satisfy for a moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Jesus as a man, he stood before uh, God as a perfect, innocent representative uh, uh, under God's authority, uh, with God's authority, to remove our sins. Because he was God, he alone even had the authority to say, this is, this is sufficient, this is, this is fitting. And he did this once for all, right? So Jesus, he stood as our great high priest, that high priest who would make atonement before the Father. Uh, but instead of doing it on a yearly basis, he did it once for all. Uh, he forgave our sin, past, present, future sin for all of those who would place their faith in him, all who would believe in him that they could have eternal life. And again, uh, Hebrews 10, the writer says this, that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And we talked about that sanctified uh, sanctification last week, being set apart. We've been justified yeah. and sanctified for him forever, yeah, uh, one time for all. And that's what Jesus did in this sacrificial death, giving uh, the innocent, righteous life for our life. And so standing in our place, uh, perfect once for all sacrifice, Jesus makes it possible for us to to receive adoption as sons and daughters and to be sanctified forever uh, to receive eternal life. And that that's that's obviously part of all we're talking about. But man, that that's the linchpin right there. Uh, the, the holy uh, son of God 
as a human being standing in the place of sinful humans. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we could do, and we would love to do, a seven-week series just on the cross. <laughs> right, right, sure. Because that is the heart of all this. We, it, I mean, it took a lot of discipline to back up and say, no, okay, for someone who's never heard any of this, let's take seven weeks and give the broad strokes, the, the, uh, the bird's eye view. And so when you do that, you have the cross in the middle, in the heart, but boy, th this, is, this is the greatest act of love ever. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and the thing is, uh, this, uh, I guess for teeing you up, uh, one of the great <laughs> things about that, like you think about like our country, <laughs> our country with like we have a declaration of independence, but our country wasn't really uh, settled until there was a ratification of, of that constitution, how things were, and that's really what happens with the resurrection. Everything Christ did on the cross, uh, if he had died and stayed dead, man, we'd be in trouble because yeah. then that would just sort of reset it but the fact that he was resurrected it was the ratification of this act and so why don't you why don't you, you want no to? no no go ahead <laughs> go ahead i didn't mean to take anything from you but i'm saying no, yeah. no what evan has been uh, sharing with us is uh, <laughs> i'm sorry is tremendous news we call it good news the gospel mm -hmm. um and listen here's the thing about the resurrection you don't have to take evan's word for it you really don't or, or my word for it, or Pastor Matt's uh, word for it, because God has verified uh, the truth of Jesus' death for sin through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 3 and verse 4, it says, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Having fully paid uh, the death penalty of, of sin, dying physically, uh, being separated from God spiritually, having fully endured the wrath of God against sinners, death had no more power because he completed uh, the offering for sin, the death penalty, had no more power or authority over the Son of God, Jesus, and he was raised from the dead, Scripture tells us, uh, raised with Others have been raised from the dead. I think it's important to say he was raised with a resurrection body, a body that he has for e eternity. Um, and by raising Jesus from the dead, God declared that he was the Son of God and that his death for sin was accepted by Holy God. It was a full and perfect payment of sin's penalty. As you said, no animal could ever do that. Romans 4.25, he, Jesus, who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. So the resurrection there shows that the justification has indeed uh, been fulfilled, taken place. He appeared to the disciples, that passage in 1 Corinthians 15 goes on to say. And he appeared to others outside of the disciples for a period of 40 days, and these become eyewitnesses to the resurrection. So we have these accounts uh, in the Gospels and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And then Jesus ascended bodily into heaven. Let me read you that account from Luke 24, verse 50 and 51. He led them, the disciples, out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. So I want you to think about it. Just a review. Jesus took on humanity. He, he lived a righteous life. He was the perfect sacrifice. He died for sin. He rose from the dead, showing sin was paid for. He returned to heaven, resuming existence in the presence of God the Father. And now, in heaven... Right now, as I speak, he is exercising lordship over his church and mediating between holy God and believers seated at the right hand of God. Now, believing in Jesus and understanding the salvation he ac accomplished gives me and, and every Christian great confidence that physical death, when it comes to any one of us, will not be the end, but that when Jesus returns, we too will rise 
from the dead, be given a resurrection body uh, as Jesus received, and we will always be uh, with the Lord. And so the, the death, but then the resurrection and the ascension uh, verify what he came to do and also give us that hope that we too will rise. We too will be with the Lord God forever. Amen. Thank you. So, let's review that map. <laughs> I've got my own copy. You okay, should sign it for me before we, before we go. What did Jesus do so that he might be the one Amen. to give eternal life to sinners? He came. He lived a righteous life. He died a sacrificial death to yeah. make atonement for us. I love this word you said, representative. Mm. Representative. He, he was our representative. He took our sins upon himself on the cross and... As you were just saying, he's now a representative in heaven. But So he came, he lived, he died, he rose and ascended into heaven. And now, as the one who lives in heaven, he gives the Holy Spirit. And anyone who hears this gospel and repents, turns away from sin and turns to God, and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, trusts in him for salvation, which is next week's episode, really talking, talking about clearly defining what those are from Scripture, right. But anyone who turns to Jesus and believes in him receives the Holy Spirit. Mm. And by receiving the Holy Spirit from Jesus, we are united to Jesus. Even though he's in heaven and we're on earth, mm. his spirit comes to live within us. And we, so to speak, dwell with him and are spiritually united with him even though he's in heaven. It's the miracle of salvation. It, it is a supernatural work of God. So Jesus came, lived, died, rose and now he lives in heaven and gives the Holy Spirit to all who believe. He saves sinners. Amen. So um, next week, episode six is, can I receive Jesus? And the answer will be yes, through repentance and faith, through repentance and faith. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, guys, what I'd like to do uh, for our last section here, what, I like, what I've, I've grown accustomed to calling our on your toes section because we don't plan this out or map this out. Although I did give them a hint tonight, so I kind of <laughs> helped them out a little bit. Just on our feet, yeah, not just our toes. Yeah, on your feet. <laughs> Stay on your feet. Um, from the perspective of the Bible, right? From the for, for the Christian perspective, in the midst of a world where chaotic things happen, right? Our individual lives, chaotic things happen on that small scale, but. But then, right now, and it happens yeah. from time to time, chaotic things happening. We look out, and there's death and eruption of sin and vengeance and injustice. And we can't predict what's going to happen, ups and downs. Um, what's, what's the Christian perspective to keep us grounded through all of this? Focused on what we need to be focused on, living how we ought to be living, speaking how we ought to be speaking. Can we just, or, I don't know, I was going to say spitball, I'm not sure if I'm using that phrase. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> summarize, <laughs> summarize just some mm. pillars, some foundation points of here's the Christian perspective in the midst of the chaotic world, this violent world. God is still on his throne. Jesus is still building his church. Mm -hmm. Scripture is honest about further decay mm -hmm. of society. Uh, because of the sin nature of man, things do not get better and better until Jesus comes. At least I don't understand Scripture mm -hmm. that way. So I think eruptions will continue to take place. In the midst of that, the call to the church is to be ready to speak of the hope that is within us, mm -hmm. which is the gospel that we've been talking about. So I don't want to be simplistic in that because I think we do speak to the issues that come up. Sure. Um, and we have biblical uh, wisdom with which to do that, but we don't take our eyes off of our uh, purpose, the commission that Christ has given to us. Yeah, yeah just piggybacking off of that, as I, was, as I think about that, exactly like you said 
uh, not only is it going to get worse and worse uh, biblically, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're told this, right, in Scripture that in, in time, you know, things are going to, it literally says things are going to go from bad to worse. Um, so we should not, first of all, be surprised by any of this. That's Secondly, uh, the, 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 the message of the world is we can make this world a better place. Yeah. You know, we can we can link arms and and uh, drink Coca Cola and teach the world to sing, right? Um, in perfect harmony. That that's not what's going to happen. That would that would be possible if we as human beings did not did not have this bent towards sinning, but yeah. we do. And so the only hope we do have is Jesus Christ uh, and the gospel. And as you mentioned, this call and 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 the way that we respond to the things that are going on in our world. Every issue that goes on in our world is a sin issue. It is a gospel issue. So as the church, I think first we need to remember our identity, first and foremost, is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So as the church, in different areas of the church, we can't divide ourselves by things that are secondary identif identifiers. Mm -hmm. We need to have our first and foremost, our yeah. identification, identification in Christ Jesus. We are sons and daughters, adopted children of God. And we do have a role to play. The, uh, now, this, I, I'm, with God's providence, I was listening to uh, a message this past week that brought out this very point. Uh, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Mm -hmm. We are here as the church to shine light into the darkness, yeah. to, to push a, some of that darkness back. And secondly, you're the salt of the of the earth. Yeah. And what does salt do? It purifies, but it slows down decay. It preserves. Mm -hmm. And that's the role of the church. The, the world is decaying. It is falling apart. It will continue to do so until Jesus comes back and we realize that blessed hope we have. Until that point, as the church, we are to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is going to change hearts. No, 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 no. No matter of uh, uh, no legislation, no changes in rules, nothing is going to change hearts. So even if those things happen, which should and they're good things to pursue, uh, until hearts are changed, that's only a stopgap. That's only a uh, it just creates law, right? And we've been talking about this. Law is going. To, that's only going to represent or reveal the the lawlessness of people. Right. Nothing will change in our world. Nothing will be better in any aspect until hearts are changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as the church, that has to be our focus. Even, even as we're trying to handle these things that are temporal that are around us, we can't get distracted by those things. Uh, we can't get lost. We can't start pursuing efforts that are of man. Yeah. The answer really is, you know, we say it almost like tritely, right? Jesus is the answer, but that is the truth. So as the church, we have to remain focused on the gospel, on on making disciples, on speaking truth in love, and, and, and being filled with grace and truth, uh, uh, and being here again, those who are representatives, salt and light, in the world around us. And so, if we if we don't keep the gospel, the main thing, the main thing, yeah. uh, it's a, it's a, we're not going to fulfill our role of of slowing that decay and being one of those uh, guards against that in the world. We'll we'll be relinquishing what Christ has given us as a responsibility and as a privilege yeah. uh, to to effect change, real salt change that for is eternity. The saltiness, it is worth said. nothing yeah. except for to be thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're safe with that focus uh, of the gospel and salvation and God's purpose because that's God's focus. Right? That's always right. been God's yeah. focus, even before the foundation of the world. This was his eternal plan. This is focused in the Old Testament. It was Christ's focus on earth. It was the apostles' focus. It's the New Testament's focus. And so, um, thank you guys for sharing that. I think these eruptions for me, um, these profound uh, eruptions of chaos and violence in, in different ways, and not just in America, but all over the world, are a good reminder of the curse of sin and death. I can get complacent. We can get complacent. We can get comfortable, especially in, in, with the prosperity and the freedom that we have here and the yeah, safety that we true. enjoy here. Those are all providential blessings from God. Not everybody has that yeah. now or throughout history. And right. so, but when we live in that, we can, we can maybe not intellectually, but functionally live our lives in such a way where we're kind of forgetting that we live under the curse of sin and death. Right. Um, 
real quick here, um, we read through Jesus' ministry in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Two things are happening. He's advancing in his purpose, moving closer to fulfilling his purpose, but opposition toward him is building. Persecution mm -hmm. toward him is building. And you see that in the book right. of Acts, too, the story of the first generation of the church. You see persecution increases and increases and hostility increases and hatred increases, but the church is growing and expanding. And mm -hmm. so there's suffering and sin, but Christ is building his church and the gospel is going forth. And that needs to be our focus. And it's not saying, and I hope you picked up on this because yeah. they both said this and I'll say, that's not saying we don't care about or we don't minister to or speak into right. issues of the state or issues of the culture. Yeah. But those, any narrative that's going on out there isn't determinative. That's not our paradigm for seeing the world. We, we're, we are a gospel people. We've been sanctified for this purpose. And so thank you for sharing that. So much more could be said about that. I mean, this, this <laughs> is just the, uh, the story of learning how to live for Jesus in a chaotic world. Or how do you be a citizen of heaven living on earth? Um, please join us next week for... Episode six. six, Can I Receive Jesus? And uh, no cliffhangers. The answer is yes, but only through repentance, repentance, and, faith. repentance and faith. Okay, let me close this with a prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Father, we pray uh, for, for your spirit. We pray for you to save the lost. We pray for you to further sanctify the saved. We pray that your gospel would go forth and change hearts. Let it change hearts and change lives and change destinies and change culture and society in an appropriate way through your providence, your working, and your power. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word and thank you for your spirit. It's in Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week.